Okay, there is this question I hear a lot from you lately. And not just you, but even physicists who don't work with quantum field theory might have troubles answering this question. Can quantum fields serve as a modern ether? Okay, here is the narrative. Vacuum is apparently not an empty space, but it's filled with these so-called virtual particles, which we call quantum fluctuations. And this creates an idea of some sort of static medium for the entire universe since any motion can be measured relative to this static medium. The answer to this question lies in a way how quantum field theory was created. You basically take the quantum mechanics, you enforce the special relativity onto it to create relativistic quantum mechanics. And it turns out to be a seriously difficult task to do, because according to special relativity, time must be treated equally to space. But the postulates of quantum mechanics say that measurable quantities are represented by eigenvalues of some Hermitian operators, and one of such operators is position in space. But there is no such operator for time. In quantum mechanics, Time serves just a parameter that the state of the system can depend on, but it's not an eigenvalue of any operator. So now you have two options. You can either promote time to an operator or demote the position to a parameter like time. In this second option, we have a space-time point as a parameter. And if we assign an operator to each point in space-time, we call this quantum field. In quantum field theory, particles are just ripples in their corresponding fields. For example, electron is a ripple in electron field, muon is a ripple in muon field, and a photon is a ripple in electromagnetic field. Okay, but this do not explain very well why combining special relativity and quantum mechanics gives rise to the quantum fluctuations in vacuum. To cook the quantum fluctuations, we need the Heisenberg uncertainty relation between energy and time from quantum mechanics and the mass-energy relation from special relativity. So, according to quantum mechanics, you can't establish the energy of the system exactly if you measure it just for a limited amount of time. This product of energy and time is always larger than a certain small value. And it is not because our measuring apparatus is limited. It is because the system itself can't have definite amount of energy in a small time period. It is the feature of nature itself, and you can't avoid it by any logic or deduction. I kinda struggled to find an easy way to intuitively describe this relation, but I came up with this. Take your theory, look at every possible outcome of your theory, and usually you require the conservation of energy, which largely restricts its possibilities. But if you have a Heisenberg uncertainty principle in your theory, it serves as an energy bank where you can borrow energy as long as you give it back fast enough. This opens many possible outcomes of your theory that would otherwise be forbidden, like the decoy of the neutron. According to special relativity, the mass and energy are related by the speed of light squared and are basically the same thing. So back to the quantum fields. I said particles are ripples in their corresponding fields, but some of the particles like electron are massive and therefore you need specific amount of energy in your field to create an electron. And this is why we call them quantum fields because the energy encaptured in these ripples is quantized. You can have one electron or two electrons, but you can't have one and a half electron. But you have to take these animations with a grain of salt because these particles don't have to be very well localized in space. In reality, by particle, we mean the position in space where the field interacted with our detector. And therefore the energy from one field was transferred to another field. 
Okay, so according to uncertainty relation, the energy of a field configuration can't be zero in a small period of time. And combining this with the mass energy relation, the mass of the field must not be zero. So there should be particles created and annihilated all around us, even in the vacuum. Because otherwise we could say that the energy of the field is zero, which is impossible for the limited amount of time. So basically, a particle with a certain mass and therefore energy can pop into existence, but it must decay fast enough so that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is satisfied. Therefore, the more energetic particle is created, the faster it must decay so that we are not able to detect it. And this is the reason why they are called virtual particles, because their existence is kinda uncertain. We are only able to detect their presence indirectly and their mass is not the same as for real particles. They might play a role in some scattering and decoy processes, for example, but the particles we detect on the detector are real. So the question was whether these fields can serve as a modern ether, and I basically gave you the answer at the beginning of this video since I said that quantum field theory was created by enforcing the special relativity onto quantum mechanics. So already by construction it is clear that these fields can't serve as an ether because ether would disprove special relativity. But how can we disprove a theory that contains a theory by theory we want to disprove? Does it make sense? Okay, but why then? Why can't we detect motion relative to these fields? Well, we can only detect the interactions of these fields, which we call particles, but particles can have any speed relative to us. So how can we say which one is stationary? But fields are a very natural framework for special relativity. We know this already from Maxwell's electrodynamics. When you have a certain electromagnetic field configuration, you can't say whether you are moving relative to this configuration. If you accelerate it, all you would see is different fields that are transformed according to Lorentz transformations, but you will not see a motion. These vectors are not moving relative to any observer. They just behave differently for different observers, and there is no way to say which behavior is stationary. And the funny thing is that if there was a wave that is propagating in a certain direction, you would not be able to boost yourself into a frame where it's stationary. All you can do is to change its wavelength. It is kind of more complicated if we are talking about phase and group velocities, but we are not going to talk about it in this video. This is basically why the speed of light is constant for every observer and not just light, but any massless field. And the quantum fields are the same. The only difference is that they can be massive and they can have different spin, which make things more complicated. But all these fields transform under certain representation of the Lorentz group. The easiest way to see all this is that the Lagrangian densities describing these fields are invariant under Lorentz transformations. And therefore the equations of motion are the same, which preserves the principle of relativity. Of course, everything I said in this video have to be taken with a grain of salt, because quantum field theory is a complicated beast, so I hope it was clear enough. So thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as it helps spreading this video to more people. And what I recommend next is to watch this video about how we build special relativity and I see you in the next video.